Friday Fuel. That that was probably the first time I've, I've said it. I, I think that was one of the first times I've ever said, welcome to Friday Fuel. <laughs> yeah, it, doing, it was bro? good. I'm doing good, man. <laughs> it lacked a little bit of welcome to Friday Fuel, but it was it was there, dude. <laughs> Dude, I'm so pumped up to be here with you, bro. I know you said you got a little something last night, a little food poisoning. Um, but you said Colin, Colin said he had yeah. something wrong and he had food poisoning. But you know what he texted me? Said I'm still going to be up here, be high energy today, right? And I think that that's that's something big, bro. Are are you doing a little bit better at least? Uh, honestly, no, I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, I got food poisoning. Uh, my wife got it as well. Um, so I've been up since about 2 a.m. and am just happy to be here though. I uh I mean today we're 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 talking about you know five things to to be highly successful. Um this one's not on what we're talking about, but I think showing up is part about being, you know, is part of being successful, even mm -hmm. when you don't feel like it. So yep, that's I mean that's kind of on our topic today, bro. But you know, just to start off, what's kind of a win that you had this week that you would want to share? Uh win this week. I'm on track to have my my biggest month yet. Um so it's it's uh going good, going good. And then I am as you can see, I have a different background. We got Tiger Woods there in the back. Oh my gosh, um, yeah, bro. We're down in St. George, Utah. I'm doing the first of one of my five triathlons tomorrow. So it's the, I, I don't think I'll be quite the Michael Jordan flu game, but. <laughs> so but, what, uh, what's the triathlon all consist again? Is that? Swimming, biking, and running. Golly, bro. Yeah. That's intense, dude. Even coming off food poisoning too. I mean, talk about showing yeah. up, bro. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna go get an IV today just to get rehydrated so I don't pass out tomorrow. But <laughs> um, dude, like it, bro. we're 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 gonna be there. So yeah, dude, amen, bro, amen. Yeah, a one for me is this week. Um, another, I, I didn't even tell you this, Colin. But you'll find out now is that me and my dad we had a we had sold a guy. We helped a guy out with a two hundred twenty thousand dollar annuity from a seminar. Two and a half weeks ago, kept falling up. We knew he had more money. We just kept falling up, kept falling up, kept falling up. Came back to the office on, what was it? Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Dude, time's flying by, dude. I'm losing track of the day. So that's how <laughs> fast time's going on. But come back to the office, me and my dad ride him a total of a $700,000 annuity, dude. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost as big as me and me and Jeff's um, because me and Jeff had that almost a million dollar annuity, which is freaking crazy. But it yeah. just shows when you continue to show up. And like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Keep doing the seminars yeah. because it keeps on working. Right. I had an agent tell me, Colin, it was like, is that not like a lot of work? Like uh, an agent told me, is like, is that is that not a lot of work to get these seminars? Because he says, you know, I'm doing all these final expenses. I'm making, you know quite a bit of money each week but is it like not a lot of work like do you enjoy doing it? i'm like bro yeah i mean if i'm getting to help all these people out and i'm making a crap ton of money doing it it's like if it ain't broke don't fix it like i'm gonna keep doing it dude right even if it was a lot of work well is he, is he scared of is he scared of getting his hands dirty a little bit is he dude, scared of i mean just picking up the phone that's Tell you, bro. I mean, I, really I didn't really understand. I was like, bro. I mean, this is a no-brainer. I mean, I, I and also anybody watching. I mean, if if you are ever interested in doing what we what we really label as a tax-free retirement seminar, but it's really, a, I mean, it is an annuity seminar trying to help people out. Not just annuities, though. I mean, it's everything retirement. Medicare. We'll touch on Medicare slightly. Um, how they can Social benefit. Social security. Social security. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then like long-term home health care and like literally everything retirement wills and trust estate planning. You know. It's everything that you really need in, in retirement, bro. So that is my win of the week. Um, it doesn't happen. Those that annuities happen often, but not that big of an annuity happens often. So I'm pretty fired up about that, bro. Do, do, do you want to know what I admire about you, Alex? What's that? Is, is most agents would rest on their laurels, like after closing as big of a deal that you did with Jeff. 
and just be like, dude, like I'm done for the rest of the year, you know, whatever. But it's like, yes, are you grateful? And are you sad? Like, are you happy with what you're doing? Yes, but you're not satisfied. And that's just, dude, you're so awesome. I just dude, want to I appreciate you, you bro. You're so that. awesome, bro. I mean, the, the relationship we've built, bro, from the ultimate agent, dude, I think it, it's not just about the show and what happened on the show. I mean, it's the relationship we built and dude, yeah. we're lifelong friends, bro. You know what I mean? Dude? Sure. It, it, it's cool to think, you know, like, cause we'll talk every week. I mean, Joe and Tony giving us this platform, bro. Like it keeps all of us connected. Me, you, Donnie and Adam, bro, Joe and Tony, I'm grateful yeah. because yeah. honestly, if we didn't have this platform, we would still be good friends. Right. But we wouldn't be as good of friends as we are today. You know what yeah. I mean? So, so it, thank it, you, Joe and Tony. You yeah, dude. Married. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, about to get married. <laughs> oh, dude. Alex, Alex wishes he wants. <laughs> he talks about my, my kids all the time. So. <laughs> I do. I do. Stay away, okay. Dude. So we'll kind of get into the, the topic of discussion here. Right. So yeah. we're, we have the five steps to becoming highly successful in the insurance industry. Right. So me and Colin last night or yesterday during the day, uh, we, we we had an idea of like let's let's talk you know we've always talked about the certain topics right but i want to talk about the real whole scheme of things when it comes to really being successful in the insurance industry since we don't have a guest on today we'll have a guest on next week but just for this time being we have five very very probably the most important steps when it comes to getting the insurance industry and what it looks like for you every day today right yeah so we're going to touch on each one for you know, a good amount of time, and then we'll go to each one once we're finished with one, okay? So first one here, Colin, that we, we had talked about was, number one, self-development, right? Because your you're, yourself and the way you're doing with your own self-development, whether that's in business, personal, like I said, I've said this on very many podcasts before, but if your personal life isn't right, right, your personal self-development, your business development is going to be right, right? That's, yeah. that's very, very, very number one, right? And... Like you said, again, I mean, I'm reading it right here in the notes. It's both personally and professionally, right? So th that's what you have to make sure you do is you stay focused on developing yourself, right? Because what's going to happen is developing yourself is what people uh, people that don't have great self-development have bad habits that they're doing every single day, right? Yep. And with the bad habits come obviously not great results, right? Good habits come good results. Bad habits become bad results, right? So we have to figure out a way and those agents know who they are, whoever's watching, if they're not in the right headspace, if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, let's replace those bad habits. I wouldn't even say it's hard to replace all bad habits at one time, right? It's like taking a guy that has an addiction. You have to replace that that day, right? Let's yeah. let's replace some of those bad habits with good habits, right? Even if it's you have four bad habits that are really messing you up day to day, let's take two of those off and supplement it with two, two good good habits, right? And then yeah. slowly transition to taking the other two off, right? And then now you're seeing your self-development. You're feeling good about yourself, right? Everything's going in the right right factor, right? Yeah. That's that's kind of the idea also I had with self-development as well. Yeah. And, and what you're describing too, so um, like I would mentioned, so we're in southern Utah right now. It's about a seven and a half hour drive from my house. So um, we listen to um, a good portion of Atomic Habits. Um, by James Clear. If you haven't read or listened to that book, I highly, highly recommend. Um, he dumbs down habits, like of just like the the cues and everything that causes us to be doing those things. Um, a big part of that is your environment. Yep. Um, and he was saying how these um, veterans that were in Vietnam were actually addicted to. I think it was cocaine. Um, I can't remember what exactly drug it was, but um, they showed that 91% of the veterans that were addicted to that drug when they were in Vietnam, when they got back, they weren't addicted to it anymore. Mm. But for somebody who was, let's say in San Francisco that went to a rehab facility, um, did the work and these veterans didn't even do any rehab work. They just left the environment. Now, these people um, in San Francisco that went to the rehab facility, they had a 91% fallback rate, meaning they got back into drugs because their environment didn't change. Yep. And so if you're struggling, and we talk about this all the time, dude, if you're struggling, you need to change your environment. Yep. And if, like 
you need to move, you need to change companies, you need to find a better mentor, whatever you need to do, just change your environment and that will help you to become better. But along the self-development line of things, um, you can't, if somebody's, you know, here on a personal level and they want their business to be up here, you have to bring who you are as a person up here because you can never outgrow your, your business will never outperform who you are. Um, especially if you're just a one-on-one -on -one agent, if you don't have any other agents, you might, you know, hire some killers and you could be a bum. It's very rare that would happen because those killers are going to notice you're a bum and they're going to leave. Yep. Right. And find yep. somebody else. Yep. Um, but you need to up who you are as a person and then you're just going to continue to grow. And that's where true joy comes from, dude. Yep. Uh, think, think back to one of the hardest times in your life. It was most likely you also had possibly felt the most joy. And I'll, I'll uh, digress after this last point. When I think about like my dad passing away from cancer, that's also when I felt God carrying me the most and mm. felt the most peace in my life at the same time. It's weird to like explain it, but it was like one of the, the hard, well, it was the hardest time of my life, but I also felt the most peace in my life at the same time. So, um, and I mean, you think back to ultimate agent, how hard did you work, but how much fun did you have? So right? true, bro. Dude, I, that's it. And I commend you for that, bro, because I think people, right. And I've said this, like I said, on many podcasts before, but people always think, why did God do this to me? Why, why me? Why me? Why me? But they don't recognize Colin. When we talk about self-development, that it's happening for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm telling you these pitfalls and these pit squeaks that you're going to go through in your, in, in your life for self-development. I mean, there's always going to be someone that's going to want to bring you down. Someone that may be jealous of you, someone that may be a, a hater towards you. You know what I mean? Those people are going to bring you down while you, you are building yourself up. Right. Yeah. Because jealousy i mean it, it's just terrible i mean what what, what you it's see with crazy jealousy, thing dude yeah, it's terrible i mean what that what what a hater will do is they'll they will talk crap on you in order to build themselves up right yeah oh he's not right in that oh he 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 ain't he ain't nothing he ain't better than me you know what i mean like that's just all pure arrogance and jealousy right like why not the, the, like, go ahead. And, and usually and usually it's 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 like a bum talking it in that way because the higher successful people in the industry are seeing this guy doing good they respect yeah. him right yeah yeah and but the, the crazy thing say, is oh, sometimes go ahead the, the crazy thing sometimes is it's the people that's closest to you too yeah you might be catching yes. slack from a sibling from a friend that you thought was a friend yes. but in reality if they see you being more successful they don't want you to get out of that circle they don't want you to outgrow them and so then they try to start tearing you down um this is 100 percent true bro yeah so but it's true yeah successful people don't talk crap on others like yep. you're you're never gonna get hate from somebody who's doing more than you exactly never gonna bro, happen, never gonna and happen. bro those people want to build you up and get, actually give you like good advice and tips on what to do how they're doing it right yeah that's what you'll notice bro yeah but they're also humble enough to ask you what you're doing too if you you've been successful even if they are doing more than you you can always learn from anybody so so true bro okay so so number one self-development yep. and num number two become irreplaceable yep. so what we mean by that is become so good at what you do that you cannot be replaced whether a client like you need to be so good at what you do that even if they get 10,000 more calls to, to buy final expense or PNC or, or annuities or whatever it is that they're going to be like, no, I got a guy. So become so good at what you do that it's undeniable and you're irreplaceable. So Alex, what have you done or how can our, our viewers become irreplaceable? Yes, sir. So how could that, and that's a great question, becoming irreplaceable, right? First off, becoming irreplaceable starts with what? Our number one topic, self-development, right? First off, we're building ourselves up, right? We're, we're, we're doing all these good – like I said, I'll jump back to the daily habits, right? We'll jump back to the daily habits of having good habits every single day instead of having the bad habits, right? 
you build up these good habits every single day. When you're building up these good habits, now it's coming habits that people don't do every single day, right? Like becoming irreplaceable, right? We're going to do things that the top 1% of people do, right? So what is that? For example, I, I don't do it, but waking up at five o'clock in the morning to get your day jump started, right? Yeah. Working sun up to sun down, right? Becoming irreplaceable, meaning <clears throat> you, the only way you are really going to become irreplaceable is obviously getting your name out there, seeing that I am the best at what I do, right? So yeah. promoting yourself, putting content out Net there. Networking. Correct. Networking, right? Now you're putting out all these different types of things um, out in the universe. So people are seeing this guy, right? Like you look at Cody. I think Cody is slim to none irreplaceable. I mean, it's it's going to be really damn hard to replace that guy, honestly, right? That yeah. he is a freaking beast and a dog at what he does, right? And he's promoted for so long. I mean, this guy's promoted for 10 years, bro. That's how you're <laughs> going to become irreplaceable starting from ground one and recognizing what actually had ha had to happen, right? Yeah, so true, bro. Right. You look at, for example, Nate offer, right? I mean, I love Nate. He's a, he's a great guy at some certain point. Right. And he's already getting to that point of becoming irreplaceable from SWAT and what he's doing in the industry. Right. Everybody's looking up to these top dogs because they kept promoting. One of the biggest things becoming irreplaceable is promoting. Right. And actually yeah. working at what you're doing. Right. Work ethic is probably one of the number one things when it come, or one of the top things when it comes to becoming irreplaceable because you have to have the unwilling desire that nobody's going to work harder than me. Right. Yeah. What does that even mean though? Like I said, starting in the morning, if you really wake up really early in the morning and you're at the office at 8 AM, right. Sharp. Yep. Then right after that, you're working until 8 PM sharp. I don't do that, but that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Right. But, but you don't necessarily have to do that to be successful either. Correct. From what I've seen, if you can be the most productive and you're the hardest worker, right. well, dude, I mean, you, you, you just won. And through time, right. Colin, like with how much swag someone builds up in the industry and how you have that, like just the knowing of, I can go in this house and close it. Right. You, yeah. you have that, you have that ability and confidence. I have that ability and confidence that we can close it no matter what. The business doesn't become easy. It's not that the business becomes easier. It's just that we've done it for so long that we we make it look easier, if that makes sense. You right? become so good at what you do that it's like. Yeah. It just, it's, and you know your numbers. You know that right. if you're sitting in 10 homes, you're closing seven. Yep. Like, in the midst of that, you having all the success, sharing it, may, people may think it's bragging. It's not really bragging. You're just sharing and promoting yourself that I am the best insurance agent in the world. Right. Like, yeah. like you're sharing that because you want to become irreplaceable yeah. that nobody can replace you. And I can help you do the same. Exactly. Just, That's just it, get, bro. Get, get in the room, dude. Get in the circle. True. Okay. So true. Awesome. You got anything else on that? Are we moving on? I'm good, bro. I, I, okay. I think that's number one. And it goes, okay. think about it. Number two goes right with number one, self-development, yep. you know, like we said. And number three kind of goes along with it as well. So it's create unshakable confidence. Yep. So confidence, like you were just talking about, of going into the house and, and having that that are about you that yeah i am the best guy out there it it confidence comes from the work that you consistently put in mm, yep and so it's just like i i know that if i am making a certain amount of dials how much money i'm going to make because i've made so many dials in the past that i know my numbers i know how much i'm going to close so it's just routine i take emotion out of it too many people have so much emotions with sales that it's just like dude you're unconfident if you're getting emotional and you're getting butt hurt for somebody telling you no. A confident person, a confident agent who's made tens of thousands of dials isn't going to get butt hurt by somebody telling them no because they know that it that's just part of the numbers game. They're going to close the next house or here in three houses or three more phone calls, whatever it is. So my personal opinion on creating unshakable confidence is doing so much work that you have so much memories of the success that you've had based off of the work that you did. That's so good, bro. So, I mean, anyway. dude, I mean, what, what I saw, um, and I think I've said this before, but obviously Colin, do you know who Jordan Poole is NBA basketball player? Yeah. 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 So uh, you look at him, right. On the golden state warriors, right. 
Dude this was guy, slinging it on the Golden State Warriors. Dude, I'm telling you, that finals run in 2022, freaking beast, bro. Nobody's stopping him. His confidence no. is through the roof, bro. Right? Yep. That guy was hooping like he, like, you could argue that was his prime. That one year was his prime, bro. He started then, to bring it back together a little bit. At, at, yeah. And then Draymond <laughs> clocked him, dude. <laughs> Not knocked his successful memories right out of him, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then he get and then great year, right? He's, he's starting to bring it back together later in the year now. He hasn't had a great year. But also, I want us to think about this, right? His confidence was at an all-time high on the Warriors. Why? Because he had good people surrounding himself, right? His confidence was great. People were building up. Jordan, you're good. Hit the next shot. Jordan, you're good. Hit the next shot. He starts yeah. hitting these shots, but he has trust in his teammates with the, their success in the history of the game, right? Curry, Clay, Draymond. I mean, these guys are generational players, yeah. right? He's got confidence in them. That also instills confidence with himself. Fast forward this year, he's on the Wizards now. He doesn't have he doesn't have uh, c- confidence in his in his uh, teams and players, right? He doesn't yeah. have confidence in them. So that ultimately brings his confidence down, right? So we go back to literally calling number one in itself when it comes to self development, right? Is your circle, yeah. right? I was watching the the reason the reason why I bring that up um, is because I I watch first take a lot with Stephen A. Smith and they they had this whole thing. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm not, Tony. If you missed the first part, I got food poisoning last night. Been up since 2 a.m. But I'm still here. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. As we get done with Friday, feel you shutting his laptop and going right back to bed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But the reason why I bring that whole story up, Colin, is because. Stephen A, they were talking about Jordan Poole, and they said, Jordan Poole doesn't have a basketball hooping problem. Like, we know that guy can play. He just has yeah. a confidence problem, right? Yeah. The coach isn't good. The players aren't good, right, yeah. in his own way because he's he's held himself. Well, I want to think about it. Not even that he's held himself. He's been in such a higher standard where the bar's always been here, right? Yeah. And then they took him right back down here, right? Exactly. Yeah, and he, so he's been—that's like calling, that's like going from a company that you're writing all this freaking business to. Yeah. But then you move companies that obviously it wasn't on his own willing thing. He got traded, but it dropped right back down here. And now it's like, what? What just happened with all my business? I'm in the wrong environment now. Yep. Yeah. Right. So important, just get in the right environment, man. Can't can't focus on it anymore. So good, bro. So, okay, number four: develop or follow a proven system yep talk to me about systems alex yeah so number one i mean we talked about this i think two weeks ago a little bit about systems but this all comes into play to becoming a highly successful insurance agent um develop a pulse system so first thing right here right i mean we first off you need a great upline right i think it's really important that you have a good upline because if you don't have a great upline your upline probably isn't going to have a good system and to become a highly successful insurance agent, you need to have a good system. Right. Um, yeah. For example, I even bring up Pete, for example, Colin, cause you're, you're with Pete, his LOA program, freaking stellar. Right. I mean, he, his he whole has, program, dude, yeah. he's got systems down. There. Yeah. Dude. That's what I'm saying. So number one, having a great system and with what you're doing, right. Um, I mean, pizza, pizza proven uh, factor of that, of having a great system and following that system. Right. Cause it's not yeah. just, up in the air, he's going to have a script. He's going to have training videos for you to watch. You need to actually sit down and follow these systems, right? For example, right. me with my dad, right? Obviously, with the Invested American, we we have what we'll do. What we're doing now, Colin, as well is we're having we have our lady named Carrie Oda. She's the lady through White Glove. We're having agents actually reach out to her and set up a White Glove seminar, right? Because this is going to be a system that we have in place that not not that it's mandatory, but if you want to become a successful insurance agent, we're going to do this with you, right? So we yeah. have a couple of guys getting ready to set it up. My dad's going to run the seminar, but my dad's also going to do, um, you know, the appointment with the agent just to kind of give yeah. them, you know, a rough idea of how it's going to look. Right. But following that system, because the system clearly works right for me, my dad and Jeff doing these Obviously. seminars. Yeah. Right. So now we're encouraging all these agents to go ahead and follow the, the exact system. Right. Um, and the thing is, people will come into these agencies, Colin. And, you know, think that they have their own way of doing things. But if you're coming into that agency from another agency, obviously you weren't doing something right. So you should probably listen to your upline and what they're what they're offering to you and what you should probably do, because obviously it didn't work last time. And in the long run, it may work in the beginning a little bit, but it's not going to work in the long term. 
right? No. Um, even for example, I mean, we have a guy with us, Adam, or, or not Adam, Colin, golly, bro. His name Jeez. is Adam. His, his name is Adam. Though his name's yeah. Adam, and we've started this whole thing with the Invested American, this lead generating business, right? Where we're getting a bunch of Facebook leads and we're dishing them out to agents, kind of forming our own little LOA program within the seminars because the seminars are going to be the main thing. But it's also going to get um, these agents' life life leads in their hands as well. Like I said, just following the system, we're encouraging you to do this, this, and this, and you should do this, this, and this, right? Not do that or that or that. Do the system and what has been followed and what has worked every single day, right? Yeah. Quit chasing the shiny object, dude. The, the, the money's in the work. And so it's like, yeah, you could have uh, – and, and don't blame everything all on your upline either. You're, there's plenty, I know, you know, 20 different uplines. Most of them have a good system. Most people just aren't following it. Yep. And so it's just like, you can be successful wherever you go if you put in the work. But I do know for a fact that there are better places so that you can have more success following Correct. certain systems. Yep. Not all I, systems are created equally. So <laughs> yep. that's very true. And one thing to touch back on the other one that goes hand in hand with this, though, is when they have these systems, right? They're not guaranteed that they're, you're going to get a sale from this, right? There's yeah. a If you come in and follow the system, you will get a sale and get guaranteed sales that you know that you'll have the confidence to do that, right? Go back to the unshakable confidence. But that all comes with, I've always said, I mean, if you're having trouble making sales, you're going to set an activity goal. And those activity goals is what's going to help build that unshakable confidence. Right. Yeah. And that un unshakable confidence from following the systems that I've worked in the past. How everything else is going to play itself out because you did the activity goals. You were the reps. I mean, it just became second nature now that you're doing all this, all this stuff. Right. Yeah. Everything's playing out. Right. So following the system of having an activity, goal because that's what I'll coach. That's what is something in my system is I'm saying every single day. I know you're a fresh agent, but we're going to have all these activity goals. So you're confident, you're going to build up your confidence. Your confidence is going to be so high that no one's going to ever be able to bring down your confidence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's and, it, bro. and it's important to tie your confidence to that activity and not the outcome, especially yep. when you're getting started. Because if you tie all of your confidence to, well, crap, I sat in 10 homes. Alex closes seven of 10, but I only closed two of 10. <clears throat> you still sat 10 appointments, dude. Like that's just a skill issue. And if you're brand new, that's okay. Like Compare tie it to, I sat 10 appointments and I still close two. Yep. Let's get better. And so then yep. next week I'm going to set 20 appointments and then hopefully I close four or five, but tie it to the activity and to the work rather than the outcome. Because dude, sales is, is like this. Yes, you're going to go through slumps, shooting slumps, like a, like a Jordan pool where yeah. you'll be yeah. You know, not shooting well, or uh, Clay Thompson's a better. Clay Thompson's been around better. You know, been around for a while. He's been kind of going through a slump, but dude, it's okay. Like you're gonna go through ups and downs, and then you're gonna score 37 points in a quarter. You're gonna close nine out of ten. Yep. You're gonna close ten out of ten. Yep. Last week, dude, not this week, this current one, but last week I had a hundred percent close rate. Never had that before in my life. And so it's just like, dude, I had a I had a hot streak. But what I didn't do was I didn't stop. I was just like, dude, I'm going to ride this streak for forever. And I yeah. have a new agent that's coming on. And it was good because he finally, he saw me, like, it was his very first week and, you know, last week. And he's like, dude, like, is this how easy it is? And I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's going to be good. And then he finally saw me get told no. And I was like, dude, like, this is good. Like, it's yep. good to get told no. And I so, think to, to, to second your point, I think obviously the, the saying comparison um, is a thief of joy, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I think also people get twisted, kind of like what you said. I, Alex had 10 appointments and he sold seven and, and I had 10 appointments. I only sold four, right? Yeah. I mean, you're taking the, the joy and the happiness and the actual good work that you put in that week for nothing. I mean, you're, you're, you're pretty much just taking away the whole week that you had right for nothing yeah right because you want to be better than somebody else you want to yeah. be better than a guy that's had industry for 15 years and you've been in the, in the business for one year yeah right oh alex closed a seven hundred thousand. i only closed a four hundred thousand. what are you mad about dude 
There's going to be, day, be a day where you close an $80,000 and especially and especially close if, a 600 that's so, And especially if you're on the same team with somebody too. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you start comparing people, dude. It's it just, it's, it's, I mean, it's just so it's, it'll it's, deteriorate a company. Yeah. Dude. I mean, it's just yeah. brutal because like I said, this guy's been doing the business for this long and you've been doing it for this short amount <laughs> and you want to already be better than this guy. Yeah. Without First doing the, work. the the saying, and it's so true is you're never going to recruit someone that's as, as skilled or good as you, right? Like you're never going to have a better recruit than you. That's what they say, right. right? Like you recruit someone calling and you know, when you're all, cause you've been doing the business, bro. You have all this confidence built up in yourself. You know that no matter who you recruit, that they're not going to be as good as you. That's not an ego thing. It's just, it's, it, it's the truth because you've been working the business so well and for so long and you know exactly how to dot your I's and cross your T's in the business that yes, you're going to train them and make sure that they're a really beast agent, but you know, at the end of the day, they're not going to be as good as you. Right. I mean, that's, that, that's just how it is. And then if you start having, they, agents, they better not, because if they do come up and pass you, that means that you quit learning. Exactly. Exactly. So, but. That's so true, bro. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next thing here. Last point. The Number most five. important one. Yes. Most important one right here is find your why. I want you to go ahead. Since I've done the last couple call and you can go ahead here and then I'll, I'll, I'll speak on it, but talk about finding your why and why it's so important. Why it may be one of the most important ones on this list. Yeah. If not the most um, important. I, I think it is the most important. Um, as you could possibly hear my why in the background um, screaming. So I've got, and if you've watched Ultimate Agent, you, you see how emotional I get talking about my wife and talking about my boys. Um, but it's because I want to be the best version of me so that my boys and my family can know what is capable, what they're capable of. What the and standard so like, is what the standard is me and my wife talk about it all the time of just like even if our boys do come for money like we're not gonna give them anything and it's like you're gonna work for everything that you get i mean you're you're a great example of it you you came from okay you know an okay spot but you're not resting on your your dad's money you're not doing yeah. anything like that like you're, you're getting after it and so for me my whole thing and that's why i'm doing these triathlons too is I want to show my kids that even if you think that something's hard and we always tell, we, we say it every day. Um, and Maverick, my, my three-year-old starting to repeat it. Um, even on his own, that hard things are good things. Oh my gosh. Calm. We just always say that. And it's like, when he's like learning to ride his bike and he's falling down, he's saying hard things are good things. Huh, dad? I was like, yes, hard things are good things. And so if you don't have a family, you need to find a why. Before yeah. I had my wife and my kids, I, you know, really focused on carrying my dad's legacy on and making him proud, even though he's not here, but I know he's watching. Yep. And so it's like, whatever it is, sit down and you need to write it down. If you don't have your why written down and it needs to be bigger than any obstacle that you'll ever encounter. Let me repeat that. Your why needs to be bigger than any obstacle any rude person, anything that you'll ever encounter. Because if it's not big enough, you're going to quit at the first time that it gets hard. Yep. Okay. So find a why big enough that it doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter if you have the flu or, or the stomach bug. I don't give a crap if they have to drag me off the, the race tomorrow. Okay. I'm showing my boys that it doesn't matter if I have the flu the day before, I, if I have the stomach bug and I'm running on two hours of sleep, I'm doing what I say I'm going to do. Amen. And that's why I hopped on the call this morning, too. It could have been easy to be like, dude, I got two hours of sleep. I've been on the freaking in the bathroom for the last four hours. Like, yeah. <laughs> could have yeah. been easy to do that. But you need to show up. You need to have a bigger why. And my why is my kids to show them that, yeah, we do hard things and we can do anything that you put your mind to. I love that, bro. I mean, think about it, right? <laughs> you, you say, have me a big enough why, no matter what obstacle, whatever comes in place, objection, that it's never going to stop you from showing up, right? Yeah. I mean, you have you you have this this why, and it, for, it's your family, right? It's my family too, my dad, right? My mom, my, my sister's making everybody proud, right? Yeah. Because you don't want to be some 
some bum that my dad has raised, right? Which is raised a very good kid, but then doesn't do anything with his life. That's just lazy as a day is long. It's not doing anything for self-development. Number one of our number one things on the list. And yeah. then just not doing anything. Right. And another, another why for me is it's always future things as well. Right. Like, for example, what, one of my, one of my why's not, I mean, you could say it's a why right now too, is for my future family, right? Like my kids, my wife, like working for them and making sure everything's taken care of, but also making my parents proud as well. Like I said, right. Because yeah. they raised a great son. I want to make sure I'm, <laughs> I'm making them proud by doing everything I can, not just money. I mean, m- money's, money's not like the, 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 key the end all be all. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like it's, it's just about living an abundant life that, you know, you just celebrating the fruits of your labor and how much work you've put in, right? Not necessarily the result, but how much work that you're putting. Cause I'm so young. I mean, if I'm no matter like, let's say I'm working all this time and I'm not making very much money, I'm still young. I'm, I'm seeing what it looks like to work hard. Right. So by that time I am pushing those days where I actually have, bi- have all these types of bills that I have to pay. I've worked so hard. I know what work looks like. So it makes it easier for me to, get over that hump and actually make money while doing it. Right. Exactly. Um, um, but I love that. I mean, lo- like I said, I mean, k- looking into the future, I mean, if you're a young guy like me, um, you know, looking into your future, why, you know, your future family, right. If that doesn't motivate you, I don't know what will, um, because that's got to give you a peace of mind. Cause you got to know God is going to take care of you no matter what the situation is. And you will be happy and have, the greatest life ever and you'll have that happiness with another you know with your future wife like all that's going to be there you just got to make sure yourself is together right because yeah. if yourself isn't together you're not going to be able to be together with someone else right yeah. you're not going to be able to have a family with somebody else so make sure that you're together right and, and you'll be grateful for all that work you put in before so now at, at our age is right you'll be so much more grateful for all the work you're putting in right now by the time you're 26, 27, 28, and you have these wife and you have these kids, you'd be like, damn, I worked all that time for the present time right now, even while you're still working, right? You're building the foundation now, not so you can relax later, right? Just so you have more free time later because you make the business look so easy, even though it's not easy that you've been doing it for this long, that you can go in and close anything, no matter what the situation is and help whomever you need to help, right? Um, And so I mean- one thing I want to add to that, if you've like, well, I've never like written down a why, like, how do I find my why? Yeah. I just want to make money. If your why is selfish, you're not going to make it. Oh, yeah. Your oh, yeah. Why has to be bigger and outside of you, and it has to be a, an act of service almost or or something just bigger than than yourself. Yep. And so for those of you that don't know, I touch on it quite a bit. But so my dad passed away when I was 17. Um I grew up on a farm. I got to spend basically all day, every day outside of school hours with, with my dad. And so for me, I feel blessed. Yes. My dad passed away at a young age. Yes. I was a teenager, but for me, I got to spend so much time with my dad, probably more so than what the average person gets with their dad. And so I want to replicate that with my kids. We don't have the farm anymore. You know, it is what it is. But insurance, and that's why I chose insurance, is so that I can build a book, a residual. That's why I like Medicare and, you know, all these other things. But I can spend the time with my family so that in the case that I do pass away, who knows, I, I die tomorrow at the triathlon, whatever it is, I drown. I can rest easy knowing that I maximized my time with my, my kids and my wife. And so it's it's becoming irreplaceable. Um, like we talked about in your personal life as well. Yep. So don't just become irreplaceable at work. That's a good thing, but become irreplaceable at home as well. Yes, sir, dude. Oh my gosh, that's so, so good, bro. Anyways, perfect. I rest dude. my case. That, that, that's that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> dude, no, you hit the nail on the head, bro. I mean, that's. I think that's a perfect way to kind of wrap this up a little bit. I mean, thinking about everything we talked about, right? I mean, I'll name these off again, and we can put it in the comments once we wrap up, but. Number one, self-development, right? Always be learning. I'm finding ways to become better in both personally, business and professionally, right? Yeah. Um, So, I mean, that's perfect because like I said, again, the beginning of the podcast, if your personal life isn't where it's supposed to be, your business isn't where it's supposed to be. 
And I know everybody watching right now, you know, if your personal is supposed to be where it's supposed to be. Right. And if it's not, go ahead and change something because I can almost guarantee you that your business is not where it's supposed to be. So go ahead and change that today. Make the, I'll challenge you to make the commitment today to go ahead and make that change so you can see your life become immensely better. <clears throat> yep. Not from day one, but long term, you'll see it every single day continue to get better. Right. Think about it. You get one percent better every day in the gym. You get one percent every day in your self development. What are you going to be in a hundred days, Colin? Oh, hundred percent better. Hundred <laughs> percent, right? Think about that, right? It's kind of weird to think there's three hundred sixty five days out of the year. If you're willing to just get one percent better every single day, even a half percent better, right? Two hundred days, you're a full one hundred percent. Get the the tanks full, right? Yeah. Your tank should never be full because that means you have nowhere else to really go. But in the instance of or the scenario of the one percent better every day, do that every single day. You guys know what your current situation is. Go attack. Don't be don't be hesitant in making that change because you're fearful or something. Right. Yeah. Go make that change. Go go help that person out. Don't be scared to go knock on that door because the person looks a little weird and you think they may do something to you. Don't yeah. be scared to go talk to that person about possibly coming on your team. Right. Don't be scared to go help that person out, right? Don't be scared to give someone a compliment. Compliments go very far away, right? Go help somebody, go give them a compliment, go just be there for somebody, right? Because yeah. that'll also help your own self develop because people, the person will be like, well, thank you, I appreciate you. You know what, you look good too. Or I, li I like the shirt you have on, thank you, right? Just being nice and kind to everybody is such a key factor, right? Self-development, yeah. be, become irreplaceable, right? We wanna become irreplaceable by doing everything in our life, promoting, showing everyone that wow, how you may be the best at what you're doing, right? And everybody's going to see it. It's like, damn, no one's going to be able to replace, replace Alexander. That young guy, stellar, killing the business. There's going to be no one that's going to replace him. Damn, Colin, young guy, killing the business. I don't think anybody's going to be able to replace him. Yeah. Right? Create unshakable confidence, right? Working so hard at a consistent level that – your confidence is already going to be there because you've worked consistently at everything you're doing every single day, right? Development and follow proven system, having the great upline, following them every single thing that they're telling you because they did every single thing that they're telling you. They're not just telling you just to tell you it. They did yeah. literally every single thing they're telling you, right? The last thing like me and Colin just touched on is find your why. Find a big enough why, no matter what happens, whatever the situation is, you guys will never get far back because the why is so big enough that's going to keep pushing you forward no matter what the situation is right yeah. and you know god's in your back shoulder and that's got you patting you on the back saying i got you and then your family is literally in your ear saying i got you right yeah so i mean that's yeah. it Colin. what else you got bro i got anything I else to add? just want to shout out joshua young's medicare machine factory for sponsoring the show um one last thing is so one of the so my company um we have a a core value that's empty the tank. And so you talk about getting 1% better every day. And one thing I struggled with was like, okay, so getting 1% every better every day, does that look like, okay, so I sold a thousand in AP today. I need to sell a thousand and 10 tomorrow. Right. It's not always going to be that way because sometimes your tank, like today for me, it may be at, you know, running on empty, but I'm going to empty the tank today. Yep. Whereas tomorrow, maybe I wake up and I have a full tank. I'm still going to empty the freaking tank. And so that's how you get 1% better is, you know, as your tank is full or, you know, halfway or whatever it is, no matter how you're feeling, that's where 1% getting better comes from is emptying the tank every yep. single day, no matter what you feel. If you're on a high, ride that high, empty the freaking tank. If you're on a low, empty the tank, go hard, get the best out of your day that you possibly can. So go, true, have a, bro. go have a stellar Friday. Thanks for hopping on. Dude, and let's go. Set your feelings good. aside and push forward no matter what the situation is because you got a big enough why to do it. Amen, brother. That's right. Cool. You guys have a great Friday. We will see you guys next Friday with a guest. We'll, have, we'll definitely have a guest next week. So we appreciate you guys. Go kill it. Another banging Friday fuel. Shout out Medicare Machine Factory. Just like you said, Colin Joshua Youngs. We love you, bro. Um, happy Friday. We'll see you guys next Friday.